Welcome back to our series where we are talking about portfolio optimization using Python. So in our previous video, we talked about uh, basically the results of our Monte Carlo simulation. And then I also demonstrated how we can plot those values on a scatter plot using matplotlib, and then also calling out a few important values on that scatter plot. And then additionally, we talked about setting up the functions that we're now going to use in this video that relate to the optimization process we're going to be using with SciPy. So the goal with using SciPy is we can run this optimization problem in a more efficient manner. That doesn't necessarily mean we're going to get the same output or the same values, but ideally we're going to get the results quicker. So the purpose of the functions that we defined in the previous video is that we're going to be using those inside the optimization function that we're going to be running. So they're helping us do a couple things. They're helping us define the constraints of our function. They're helping us define what we're trying to minimize in our function. So when we're actually minimizing it, we are actually trying to do that. And another important thing is we need to know that we can minimize different things. Now, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to kind of give you a high level overview about kind of what we're doing and why we're doing it. I'm not going to go into necessarily every little piece of detail, but at least high level, what are some things we need to think about? And then I just realized I misspelled that. So <clears throat> to start things off, we know we're using SciPy. We know we're trying to optimize something. We're optimizing by looking at how we can minimize a value. So we're trying to minimize something. It's very, very important that you know right away why we're doing minimize. With the SciPy optimization module, there is no maximize function. That's important to know because it's going to determine how we define our functions that we want to then find our optimal values. Let's take a look at our negative sharp function. That's very specific, don't you think? It's kind of odd, like, why would I want a negative sharp ratio? Well, it's kind of hard to understand until you realize that we don't have a way of maximizing using the SciPy optimization module. There is no maximize function. And so because of that, we need to define a way of minimizing something. So we can still get the optimal value for sharp. However, we need to think about it in different terms. What we can do instead is instead of getting the positive sharp value and trying to maximize that, we can instead take the negative sharp ratio and use that instead. And so I actually found a little article online. I'll put it on here if I can remember to put the link. But I think in his, he actually does a pretty decent job of highlighting why you would want to do the negative aspect of it. Let me see if I can find it where I found it before. Of course, now I can't find it. <laughs> That's usually how it goes is I was reading it during the video and then I forgot about it. Um, here, so the minimize volatility. So uh, here he's trying to say, hey, we don't, with the sharp ratio, it's a little bit different. So with this one, we're returning the sharp ratio, but in this situation, we want the negative of it. And the reason he says is the negative of the sharp ratio or one over uh, one plus the sharp ratio uh, we can minimize that because as the sharp ratio increases, then what happens? Then what happens is our, our, our basically our function is going to minimize. So we can kind of do the reverse input. And by increasing your sharp ratio, this should go smaller and smaller and smaller. So that's the goal behind it is we want to minimize this is we want to make it where it goes smaller and smaller and smaller, smaller. So this is why we are minimizing or why we are taking in the negative sharp ratio. Now, additionally, you can minimize different aspects of your portfolio. Remember, we can have different types of portfolios. You can have ones that minimize volatility. You can have ones that minimize the negative sharp. You could have ones that minimize the return. So there's different ways of minimizing it. Um, we're not gonna go through the return one, but I will show you the volatility one. So that's at least high level. <clears throat> Um, some things that you need to take into consideration. Additionally, we need to define some constraints. So those are things like, you know, making sure that <clears throat> we don't have more than 100% allocation for our portfolio. Um, that's 
That's basically saying, hey, you can't have anything that goes above 100%. So those are going to kind of be some bounds that say, hey, each asset can't exceed of that. And then uh, there's this other one that says we want to we want to 100% allocate our portfolio. So we don't want to leave any capital on the table. We want to apply it. We want to use it all and we want to invest it all. So that's going to be um, another constraint is that we use all of our capital and we don't leave any on the table. But if we do use all of our capital, we have to make sure it's bounded and that it does not exceed 100%. Now, we've seen like in the previous uh, Monte Carlo simulation that in order to start the process, sometimes we have to randomly guess values or randomly provide weights. So a lot of people say, well, what should be my initial weights? Well, a really simple option is to take 100% and then divide it by the number of symbols in your portfolio. So for example, if I have four symbols, I would then allocate each weight to 25%. It's a starting point. We're not going to say it's the most optimal one. It might be, we don't know, but it's at least a starting point. And then from there, you're going to get an output and you're going to start tweaking it little by little. And then you're going to start arriving at that optimized uh, value. Now, in this particular uh, optimization process, we're going to be using the SLSQP method. And this is short for sequential least square programming. Um, this is a little bit different in the sense of I'm not going to go into too much detail with it kind of it's kind of beyond the scopes of this video but basically it's a technique we can use to uh, minimize the results of this process so it's just a it's a mathematical technique um, it, it kind of does go into a little bit of detail um, I can probably provide some videos if people want it on some topics about this um, I'll be honest it's a little bit above my head sometimes but I think if you take some time and you just read through it little by little, it'll make more sense. But it's basically just a mathematical technique we can leverage in order to find those optimal values. So what we're going to do first is we're going to define uh, some of our bounds. So the bounds are going to represent uh, this idea that no particular value can uh, exceed 100 percent of the portfolio. So the total portfolio value. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to define the bounds in our optimization process. From here, we're going to do bounds equals a tuple. And then we're going to have a uh, tuple that ranges from zero to one. And then we're going to say, hey, I want a, a basically using tuple comprehension. We're going to have a tuple within a tuple. And we're going to say four symbol in range number of symbols. So we're going to have four tuples that are all bounded the same. And basically what this is just telling us is, hey, each uh, asset can have be between zero and one, but it cannot exceed those bounds. Now, uh, basically, I'll just put a little note here. Make sure that no asset is more than a hundred percent of the total portfolio. That's how you kind of need to think about it. Okay, then from here, we're going to define the constraints. So with this one, uh, we're saying we need to make sure the weights do not exceed 100%. So we're going to say constraints equals in a tuple, we're going to have a dictionary. The first key is type. Well, what kind of constraint is it? It's we're saying this has to equal something. So it's an equality constraint. And then we're going to be using a function to define that equality. And so we're going to say use the check sum function. All this is saying is that it cannot exceed uh, 100%. So that's our constraint. Then from here, we need to define the initial guess is. And so with this one, uh, we'll start simple. We'll just take each symbol and then uh, apply basically equal distribution. So we'll say number of symbols uh, times brackets one divided by the number of symbols. That's our initial guess. And then from here, we can perform the optimization process. So we're going to say optimized, optimized sharp equals psi plot dot 
uh, what do I want? Minimize, minimize. And then we're gonna say, uh, what is it? I think it's, I can't remember what the first arguments are, but basically we're gonna start with the grab negative sharp. This basically is representing uh, what we need to minimize. So what we need to minimize, then we have the init guess that is these are the initial weights i think this is x0 i'll just leave it blank i don't want to mess it up the method is going to be slsqp so se sequential least square programming and then from here we're gonna have our bounds. Well, that's just defined by our little tuple. And then our constraints is going to be our constraints. That little function we defined up there. And then with this, we actually have everything we need to print out the results. I'm gonna run all the cells up above because I didn't run those ones. Optimize sharp. Grab negative sharp, perfect, everything ran, beautiful. So let's run this, looks like that came out. So now we need to grab the values that we want. So in this situation, I want to grab things like, uh, <clears throat> uh, what is it, the, the metrics, so the optimized metrics and then the weights and stuff like that. So with this one, what we're gonna do is grab the, final results. So in this situation, we'll call optimized metrics equals get x metrics. So we're going to say get metrics weights equals, and then it's going to be optimized sharp. And then it's going to be x. So this little portion right here, this is the weights. And then from here, it's just more printing. So I'm gonna again, grab that and then put that here. And then we can see that these are the weights. Keep in mind, some of them are very small while almost all of it is in one asset, which is quite odd. And then we also have the optimized metrics. So you have your returns, your volatility, and then your sharp ratio. So this does deviate from what we got from our Mar Monte Carlo simulation. So never expect that they're going to be exactly aligned. Um, personally, <laughs> looking at this initially, uh, it would seem the Monte Carlo is giving us the better sharp ratio. Well, at least the maximized sharp ratio. So, you know, you're getting different results. You kind of have to interpret that yourself and say, which one would you want to go with? Um, <clears throat> this one, again, you're doing it in a different process. It never guarantee that you're going to get the same output. Um, these ones, you know, that's kind of your trade off is with the optimized approach, you might get it done quicker, but you might not get the most optimized, uh, values. So just again, keep that in mind when you're walking through this. And then that's basically doing it for the sharp ratio. We can actually do the same exact process for the volatility aspect. We just have to change a couple things with it. So in this one, we're gonna say optimized volatility, volatility, and then with this one, I wanna use the grab volatility one, grab volatility. Now with this one, it's actually a little bit different. So this one, we don't have to do any modification because with this one, we can minimize volatility. So this one, we're saying, hey, find us the smallest, uh, volatility value that you can. So this one's actually a little bit different. This is this is something where you don't actually have to think through it a little bit more, uh, a little too, not too deeply. So we'll say optimize volatility. And then from here, we'll say optimize volatility. You can see we do have a little bit different. So the weights on this one's actually very, very different. So that's, Again, kind of interesting when you think about it, it's like, well, that's odd. You would think that uh, you wanna have such variability on it, but it does happen. And then again, we can take those optimized metrics ourselves and see what happens. So 
We'll put that there. We have our optimized metrics. You can see that these weights are a little bit different. So this is actually distributed a little bit. So that's kind of interesting. Um, <clears throat> let me try this for a second. I want to check something because I'm curious now. One over one plus the sharp ratio. So we'll say one divided by one plus the sharp ratio. I'm curious something about this. And then we'll say negative. And then I'll run this. Oh, it's still kind of giving the same results. But that's not right. So let's do this. Yeah, still same results. OK, I don't know. It, I get what this one's doing, but it does confuse me a little bit when I first look at it because you're like, OK, I'm doing this whole sharp ratio modification. I'm trying to basically turn this maximizing problem into a minimization problem. Uh, it's just kind of interesting because, you know, you do get some pretty vastly different results, which is curious. I mean, you're basically saying 100% needs to be allocated in one stock and almost nothing in any of the other ones. So, I mean, I guess it doesn't deviate too much from our other ones. I mean, if you think about it here, we're putting everything in one stock. It's just kind of interesting that it's now switched to our fourth one. So I guess it's kind of telling a similar story. It's just this one seems more evenly. I mean, it has more variation in the weight. So it's just odd where the other ones, it, it seems like it's saying put everything in one particular stock or this one, there does seem to be some variation in the weights, um, especially with the volatility one. This is, you know, you can see there's definitely variation with it. So again, it's a quicker route. You might get different output. You're going to have to just determine, you know, is that just the fact of you're not running as many operations as possible? Personally, when I do this, I'll be honest, Monte Carlo, I Monte Carlo to me at least is more interpretable. Like I understand what's going on behind the scenes. So I have a little bit more confidence in the output only because I understand what's going on. And I guess I can I can read it better. With this one, there's there's some trickery that I have to do in order to get it to work. And that that does make me a little bit more hesitant to use it sometimes because you really have to understand how that trickery is working and making sure you're doing it correctly because otherwise you could get some weird results. And then it's it's kind of telling you a story that you're just skeptical a little bit of it. That That's all it is. So again, not that it's bad or anything. It's just, you kind of have to keep that open mind of, you know, is this really working the way we're thinking it? And does it maybe need to be something a little bit different, something like that? Because again, these are just different results, very different results. And we're saying something very different here. So. With that, though, that does conclude the series on portfolio optimization using Python. So if you have any final questions about how to use it and, uh, you know, what are some things that you can do to maybe enhance it or extend it, you know, feel free to put that down in the comments below. Otherwise, we will see you in our next video.